Uh, going forward, sort of uh, some of the uh, some of the pieces that we're we're very passionate about is is the notion of programmable networks is about you know let's say I'm deploying 500 sites and this is how our thing went with uh, this particular retailer right they tried us for, in one store for six months the second store for about two months the second store was launched 100% without logging into our UI and that was their thing is we want to be able to program ground up. It's not APIs because our customers are pestering us. We are API first. That means we do more with our API than our UI. And so now they went one, two, and 500. And that 500, they're not logging into our UI, period, to set up these APs, you know, config, anything, right? And, and that's the idea is we think programmability is about being able to do everything, you know, uh, API-wise. The, the next piece that you know, is not showing very well here is the notion we touched a little bit about microservices, right? Uh, we came from a world where everything sat in a box and all the services were on you know, uh, you know, a um, single core or a, um, a system, right? Now, each one of these boxes is a different microservice. It does, isn't showing very well here. So we are monitoring how RRM is doing for all of our customers. We are monitoring what the location latency is for all of our customers. You know, we are monitoring how many guest web pages we are serving for all of our customers, right? So all of this actually sort of lends to us being sort of a service provider for you guys and our partners, essentially. So uh, Jeff, I think we'll close this section at this. And you know, uh, we, we've talked about this. Fundamentally, to summarize this, it's all about you know, if, if, if Wi-Fi could be deployment simple, but also operationally simple, if location is high accuracy and easy to deploy, and networks are programmable, we feel the experiences are much, much better. I'm gonna pause, go to the next section. This is sort of what we are actually launching today in the press, right? The, you know, we, we set, a, uh, set the table up for, for this, but this is what we talked about in, in the transition Bob mentioned is, you know, it's the first thing is about anomaly detection and, and baselining, and that's what we are doing. This is, this is what is new for our customers that is gonna launch in the month of um, uh, August and, and in, into September. So anomaly detection, then correlations within a client, and then the feature discovery of, you know, our passion is the following, and this is the way we look at problems, right? First, somebody calls in, I want to know what is the highest level the problem has, has actually occurred at. Is it at the AP, at the site, at the org, at the DHCP server level? That's number one. Let's say it actually is um, something that didn't correlate to all of the stuff that we know. Then, let's say the, it's a coverage issue. Coverage went down, magically. Then, the correlation is around what was all the stuff that we know before and after? Did config change? Did image change? Did the client device operating systems change? All of that. That correlation is the next step for us, and that's coming, that's coming as well as part of this PACE 3.0 launch. PACE is our sort of predictive analytics correlation engine. So we touched a little bit about WXLAN policy. WXLAN is uh, it's a mistrademark, and you know, it's equivalent to sort of the VXLAN in the data center side. And this is something we haven't really uh, um, manifested uh, fully in its, uh, in its potential. But what we are launching today is the first instantiation of using this policy fa uh, fabric to do, uh, solve a specific use case uh, for micro-segmentation. We're calling these personal WLANs. What is personal WLANs? Personal WLANs is the notion of uh, and again, it doesn't apply everywhere, but where it applies, it is, a, it is a beautiful thing. So let's say you're in a dorm room, and you want to see your Chromecast and your Apple TV, but not everybody else's, right? You could do that with some amount of work today. You would have to self-register with uh, you know, your Radius server or your vendor's uh, server. You have to register Macs, whatever, right? What we're doing with personal WLANs is we want to create auto micro segmented networks. What that means is we'll give you a, a, a unique key for each one of you on the same SSID. You know, you know, some of the vendors call it private pre-shared key. Great. But when you put that key on your Apple uh, laptop, on your Chromecast, on your Apple TV, those three things become now a segment without you having to self-register anything. So in a dorm room, if I give a key to room 101 and room 102, 
they see their own devices, they don't see anybody else's devices, right? And so now take this to apartment complexes as an example, multi-dwelling units, you would actually just you know, give a password for every apartment in the, in the building, boom, they all have their own network that is segmented and it's completely automatic. They would self-serve their keys into it and, um, and, and not have to worry about it. I'm gonna fast forward uh, sort of uh, the, the demo that was happening in the background is now these two guys are using different keys on the same SSID, but when they do that, what happens is um, you'll start to see this particular device no longer can see the Chromecast while this device continues to see the Chromecast. When they were using the same key, they could see it, and without any backend magic, uh, you know, now the Chromecast is only visible on this device, right? So this is just a, a, a simple, stupid example. So for the, the micro-segmentation, is that happening at layer two, or are they putting them on separate layer three? Layer VLANs? two. Layer yeah, two yeah, on the, the AP. Layer two on the AP. No, they're all on the same VLAN. They what, could be all on the same VLAN. What about between APs? Uh, it works across APs. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, and it is that, that's why we sort of call it a fabric, and the whole differentiation here is the auto segmentation, no manual policy. So if it's working across APs, could you effectively be roaming around, like, say, a dorm and being on your own personal? You could still see your printer in your room by yourself because it is your personal network. Wow. Does that, okay. does that expand across the whole cloud then? Wherever this SSID spans. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, it, it, it isn't nirvana for everything, but like, for example, we are going into enterprises where, you know, some lab will say, hey, I'm using an Amazon Echo for some testing. Can you give me a, a and they're like, no, we only do DAW one access. Like, now you can actually do a PSK network and segment that lab can use that key. They can see all their devices and nothing else, right? So uh, there's some interesting examples of this. I'll keep breezing through this. Um, the, the convergence piece of Wi-Fi and BLE the starting point are these sort of mundane use cases of push notifications and wayfinding, proximity messaging, and, and analytics. We actually didn't go into analytics. But if you really think about it, we talked a little bit about this, converging Wi-Fi and BLE data meaningfully in the back end, you can actually look at the quality of the network, yes. Another question from Twitter, yeah. going back to the personal WLANs. Yeah. How many can you do? How many are supported? So we we have about 2,000 right now, but I, actually we have no limit because, and that's the way the cloud is written. Uh, we have, you know, I guess, uh, you know, we have dorm rooms that are, you know, five, 7,000 users, uh, you know, as in. So you uh, don't have a, we don't have a, limit. a limitation. It's okay. in the cloud, yes. So, so the convergence of Wi-Fi and BLE, we feel will, it's a starting point to say, I'm solving some marketing use cases. The end game is there's network performance, there is a network security, meaningfully network security, because if I can get you to one to three meter accuracy, uh, uh, you could do, start to do some very cool network security stuff. A again, um, client remediation, you know, we look at latency, jitter, everything coming from that client. And that's just the beginning. I mean, we could actually add synthetic testing on the client as well. Uh, other vendors have done it as an overlay. Uh, we feel that's, that's unsustainable, right? Um, and then um, sort of context-based engagement is the marketing use case today. The, the next piece of this, this is very exciting for us, although we don't talk a lot about it, it is, this is the only AP in the market today that has a built-in IoT port that takes analog to digital. And so we're seeing customers that are putting, you know, motion sensors connecting to it as a second factor of, hey, the Bluetooth said somebody was in the room. Is somebody really did walk into the room? Now there's two factors to say, okay, that room is occupied, mark it on the calendar, and say the meeting has started, right? And so we actually have a Fortune 100 enterprise using us for room occupancy for that kind of stuff, right? Then um, temperature sensing, again, you know, uh, uh, lots of interesting use cases here, but using uh, Eddystone TLM, we can actually detect uh, the temperature, again, once you bring it to the cloud. The story here is not that we have an IoT port on the AP. The story here is we've created an architecture for streaming all kinds of data into the cloud, and you can actually build services on it, right? And that's, that's sort of the, the, the vision for us is that once you harness this data in a meaningful way, um, you know, the, all of these transitions become, all of these services become seamless uh, to bring on. So did we come up with a number for what that bandwidth requirement was? Yes, yes. so it is um, two kilobits per AP, 
and with a with a with a hundred clients on an AP, it's it's twelve kilobits per AP at two, that, at two seconds interval. We're going to turn it tone it down, divide that by ten if we go to twenty second intervals. Right. Okay. So yeah, I just said, but the the bandwidth is twenty. Sorry, what kilobits per second? Two kilobits per second. But with, uh, with for for the AP itself. Yeah. And when you have that, if that AP has a hundred users. It's 12 kilobits per second. Yeah, so think of it, it's like, oh, sorry. Uh, 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 yeah, so, that, so that number is not an, an, an AP, an a, every two seconds, an AP with 10 clients would be doing 14K bits per second. So you take an AP, 10 with clients. How many clients, sorry? 10. Say you have 10 clients. 10 to 1. Say, say it's a 10 to 1 ratio. You'll get about 14K bits per second. You divide that by 10, you'll get about 1.4. So right now, that's a two second rate. Right. So two, two sorry. Two kilobits per, uh, out of the uh, box. per AP, and then with 100 clients, it's 128 kilobits per AP. Okay, let's see some reasonable clients per AP numbers, yeah. though. Like he was talking about 10 clients per AP is, is you know, a reasonable saying. We're talking 14, 14, 14 kilobits, kilobits per second per AP on the default uh, um, frequency. Default frequency. Okay. Yep. Thank cool. you. Cool. And that's, the, I mean, so we're, and we're saying we probably will reduce that by a factor of 10 in most cases. Because we're, we're, we're going to try to... Yeah, you can down. slow down the amount of time, yeah. how okay. often you're dumping the so, data. So, uh, last slide, Bob, maybe bring it home. Yeah, so in our final four minutes, thank you, Sudhir, for speeding that thing up and <laughs> rapid speed. So, kind of on this virtual wireless ass assistant adventure we're on right now, uh, what you'll see come out of us on our next steps will be more SLE metrics and classifiers. Uh, it'll probably be more classifiers, which is, to your point, root causes, right? So when there's a coverage problem, we'll still keep adding to those classifiers. Um, you'll see our data science toolbox get deeper. You know, right now in that throughput estimate, we're working on both neural networks and linear regression models. We're starting to see what the power of neural networks can bring in that to the problem and solving the, on these prediction models. So you'll start to see that coming up in our next generation stuff. And probably the big thing you'll see come out of us is really starting to put, I think this was to your point, a face on AI. How will an IT guy actually start to interface with this virtual assistant? You know, what does that interface look like? You know, do they want to have more of an interactive system on feedback? You know, as we start to make changes to the network, um, you know, what I have found in my career with IT guys, they don't trust anybody. Whether it's a okay. virtual guy or a real guy, they don't want anybody touching their knobs unless they know exactly what, the, what you know, unless you give them permission. So are, you, are you going so far as to, you know, like, hey, Siri, why does my Wi-Fi suck in Building 5 today? <laughs> or even Alexa. Yes. I mean, we're getting to... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, stop about Siri doesn't know yet, apparently. I think but. we know why that. Let's think this is some vendor. This is not a missed system here. Uh, but, yeah, that, I think that is the next thing is really this is the human impact of, hey, you know, when you do all this technology, eventually there's a real human somewhere that has to interact with it, whether it's natural language or some sort of interface that brings that data to the forefront. Because you think about the problem we're solving. You know, we have terabytes of log files the guy's dealing with. We're trying to help them take terabytes of log files and get him to the right point quickly. With that, we have two minutes to spare. Yeah, two, two, two minutes. And oh, by the way, we do Wi-Fi too, normal <laughs> Wi-Fi for regular humans. <laughs> so we didn't do the, uh, the demo today, but we actually have SSIDs and beacons, yes. Oh, sorry, another question from Twitter. Are you guys looking at, like, Hollow or I can't even. Halo. Halo. Um, Sub gig support or IoT. <laughs> I can't even. Oh, Hollow, I can't oh, even. Um, this is the, uh, the Spectrum. The different. Nine, the 900 megs. The 900 megs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're not, uh, you know, currently we're not actually looking at the uh, .11AH, the kind of the IoT low power yeah. band. Yeah, no, we're not actively engaged with the uh, 900 megahertz stuff. Not yet. Uh, one of the things I've you know I've seen in here, and you know, you guys have so much data, which is awesome. Um, as you're looking forward, I think having some more classification, like you know, end user stuff. So like I can go in and I see that device list. If I can start to put that into meaningful groups, right? That like you, we use the healthcare thing. If I could just say these are all my infusion pumps, right? And then I can just grab a report that is the performance of my infusion pumps. Stuff like that, I think, would be super valuable. And, doesn't seem like it'd be that hard since you guys already have that data. It'd just be a agreed. Yeah. So we do that on the BLE side, but your your right. your point is valid for the Wi-Fi side. We should do that. Yeah. Uh, makes sense. Because then I should be able to just have a report that's you know if I'm a biomed guy, here's my top 
issues, right? Correct, correct, correct. 